Welcome to Easy Alim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic reaction rates and reversible reactions. We are still looking at the factors affecting the rate of reaction and today we are going to be looking at surface area. So you see how surface area or the uh, surface of the particle affects the rate of reaction and then you do a practice. So effects of the particle size or the surface area. So a decrease in particle size increases the rate of a chemical reaction and an increase in particle size decreases the rate of reaction. So if a smaller particle size, it will mean that it has a very large surface area. In simple terms, like it is able to interact with the reacting particles more if it is very small in size. But if it's very large, it means it has a very small surface area, so it's not able to collide with the reacting particles. So a smaller size means that a larger surface area, and thus a larger surface in which the reacting particles can collide. This means more collisions and more chances of effective collisions, leading to a higher rate of reaction. So for example, if you react dilute hydrochloric acid with marble chips, the larger the carbonate granules undergo a slower rate of reaction than finely, divide, finely powdered cal calcium carbonate. So we know calcium carbonate uh, reacts with HCl to form carbon dioxide and water and calcium ions are, are produced. So the graph one is for the volume of gas against times for the granules and powder. So you can see with powder, the rate of reaction is higher. With granules, the rate of reaction is lower. And then uh, the graph two is the loss in mass of calcium carbonate against time. So with powder, you see the, the carbonate is being lost very quickly. With graph two, you can see the carbonate, the loss of carbonate is lower. But you can see all, the, all of them at the end of the day stabilized because the reaction is complete. So you do a sample. A marble chips were put in a beaker containing 100 centimeters cubed of 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid. The beaker was then placed on a balance, and the total mass in the total loss in mass recorded after every two minutes in the table below. So you can see the time and loss in mass. Why was there? So the questions are why was there a loss in mass? Um, calculate the average rate of loss in mass between those times and explain the difference between the average rate in reaction one and reaction two, and write an equation for the reaction that takes place, state and explain three ways in which the rate of reaction could be increased. Then we plot a graph of total loss against time, and then from the graph here, there's some questions. So there are some questions we can answer without the graph, like why there was a loss in mass. This is because, the reason why there's a loss in mass is because the the marble chips are reacting with hydrochloric acid. So they are being used up in the, in the process to form carbon dioxide, which is given off. So carbon dioxide is not being re remaining in the solution, it's being given off, it's being lost into the environment. So the more carbon dioxide is being given off, the more the, the decrease in the masses, in the total mass of the, of the reactants and also the product. So that we can answer and how the rate of reaction can be increased. It can be increased by either uh, increasing the concentration of the acid. It can be increased by making the marble chips to be powdered. Those are the ways it can be increased. That way, if the, the size of the marble chips um, is reduced or it becomes powdered, it increases the surface area. So to like for the reacting particles, so it gives rise to more collisions, which cause successful collisions. If we increase the concentration, as we did in the previous lesson, it means you have more hydrogen ions in solution, so they are going to react faster. So the rest, we will be able to identify them as we do the graph. So let's draw the graph together and see how it's supposed to be drawn. So we have uh, the graph paper and then we have the, the values. We have been told to draw the loss of mass against time. So we are going to have the loss of mass on the y-axis, this side, and then the time you have it on the x-axis. So we can write that down, this is time. And then 
uh, this is going to be the loss. Allow me to write loss. So let's choose a correct um, a correct uh, scale. So you can see for time we are starting with uh, zero zero minutes to twelve minutes. So you can use one. Uh, you can use a, a a a range of two 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 two. So we can start with two minutes, four minutes, six minutes, eight. 10 like that so we can have two minutes here we can have four we can have six we can have eight we can have ten we can have twelve we can have um a 14 and then 16 and so on and so forth and then on the y-axis we have loss and loss we have from zero grams to the highest gram is three grams, 3.25. So you can see we have a very large scale. So we can start with zero to, so we we'll use a scale of, um, so we will start with zero to one gram, then uh, two grams, three grams, four grams, five grams, and six. So every two centimeters represent one gram. So this is going to be 1.5, 2.5, uh, we have 3.5 in the middle here, 3.5, and then 4.5, and then 5.5. So that one, uh, one, two, two small squares represents uh, 0.1. So we can work it out like that. So we have a zero, zero. So the first point is here. And then the second is two minutes and 1.80. So this is 1.5, 1.6, every two. Uh, 1.7, 1.8 is here. And then four minutes is 2.45, so it's 2.5, so it's 2.45, so it's, this is 2.1, it's 2.2, 2.3, 2.45, so it's in between, so it's supposed to be there. And then six uh, minutes to 2.95, so 2.5 here, 2.5. Uh, six, uh, 2.7, 2.8, 2.95, so it's supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. 2.9, so this is 2.5. Uh, let's make that correction. So this is supposed to be 3, then 3.5, then 4. So it needs to be between 2.5 and 3. So this is 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9. This is supposed to be here. So let's make a correction. So we have identified it's supposed to be there. So next is at 8 minutes, 3.20. So we are at 8, 3 point, uh, this is 3.0, so it's 3.25, so 3.1, 3.2, it's supposed to be in between here. And then uh, 10 minutes is 3.25, uh, so this is 2.0, and then this is 2.5, supposed to be close to the same place. And then 12, it just stagnates the same place. So we can see how the graph is moving. You see from zero, we can join. It might not be perfect. Uh, let's join that one more time. Uh, we can decide to start from here. It's easier that way. So you can see it stagnates and then goes down slowly. to zero degrees Celsius, like that. 
So this is just a sketch of the graph. Um, so that's how it's supposed to look like. So if we go back to our questions, we've been told to calculate the average rate of loss in mass uh, between 0 to 2 and 6 to 8. So we can work that out. 0 to 2. So change in x is 2 minus 0. So we go to where 0 is. So 0 is at 0 minutes on the on the x-axis and then at 2 it's at um, so if we, we interpolate at 2 it's supposed to fall on uh, 1.8 1 1.8 minutes so it's 1.8 minus 0 so it means it's 2 divided by 1.8, which gives us 1.11, and it is min mass or grams per minute. So the next was 6 to 8 minutes. So we interpolate 6 to 6 to 8. So 8 minutes we just go up like this and you can see everything i have to show on the graph so change this is change in y so change in x is going to be eight minus six minutes of a change uh it's supposed to be y over x so let's make that correction so change in y over change in x so it's 1.8 minus 2 minus 0 over 2 minus 0, which is 1.8 divided by 2. Uh, so 1.8 divided by 2 gives us 0 0.9. So it is going to be 0 0.9 uh, grams per minute. And then for uh, times 6 minutes to 8 minutes, so change in y over change in x. So change in y is um, at 6 minutes, it's 2.9. So we start with at 8 minutes, it's 3.20 minus 2.95 over change in x, which is 8 minus 6, which gives us. So if we do uh, 3.20 minus 2.95, it will give us 0 0.25 divided by 2. So 0 0.25 divided by 2 gives us 0. 0.125 and it's grams per minute so that's how you you calculate so we have only done the rate uh, you can check out the question after the video and try to finish up the rest of the question but you can see how you've done the graph is not that complicated make sure you have the correct scale so that you can be able to do the correct calculation that's it uh, see you in the next lesson as we do another factor